Welcome to the first video on a series on robotic arm manipulation with human experiences and reinforcement learning. I'm going to go ahead and start by saying that this is going to be a, a fairly uh, complex walkthrough. Um, and for those who haven't seen one of my videos before, um, this is not necessarily going to be a lesson. It's going to be a coding walkthrough of how I solve the problem. Um, you know, I'm, we're going to type the entire project out together. Uh, we're going to do a, a full, you know, build out. So if you type along, you should end up with, or if you, you know, build along with me, you should end up with a completed project at the end. Um, but I'm not going to stop and talk about every bit of the theory. Um, this is not a, a zero to zero to a hundred reinforcement learning course, uh, not doing anything like that. Um, this is just me presenting a problem and then walking you through my solution to it. I um, mean, this is a fun one. So I, what I've got up on the screen here is the Franca kitchen robot in a, uh, you know, our, our simulated kitchen environment here. I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see that better. And there are a couple of important things to note. So the first is that this is a sparse reward environment. Um, so sparse rewards, meaning that it's, it's only going to get a reward um, when it successfully completes a task. The second is that um, it's, it's a multi-step environment, clearly. You know, it needs to be able to open a microwave, move a kettle, turn a light switch on, um, turn a burner on, open a, you know, open a uh, cupboard. So let's talk about the first one first. So without, um, there are a couple different ways that, that agents can learn things without good, without good rewards during the process. So most, most RL methods are going to have some uh, mechanism for exploration. You know, in Q learning, it's that you're going to take a random action a certain amount of the time. Um, you know, with uh, SAC, Soft Act Critic, which we're actually going to be using, uh, it uses a temperature parameter and forces a certain degree of exploration. Um, but with an arm like this, you've got, you know, nine, it's got nine degrees of freedom, which means it has nine separate joints that can have a, um, a value applied between negative one and positive one, depending on which way the joint's going. So unlike a simpler environment, something like Pong, you know, that robot arm is never going to randomly explore its way to doing a complex task. Um, maybe if you set it off and let it sit there for a month, it might eventually, you know, flail around and whack into something and succeed. But for the most part, this requires uh, things to be, you know, a, a coordinated attempt at moving the various joints and, uh, and, you know, actually take on the task. The second thing is that it's relatively hard to, so, so let's talk about how we're solving that first. And actually, I'm going to pull up a diagram to walk through it. So this is where human experiences come in. So for complex tasks with minimal rewards, one of the there are a couple ways you can solve it. One is with intrinsic curiosity, which I covered in the main, maze solving video I did last. Um, but this is a little bit... Uh, I won't say it couldn't be done with intrinsic curiosity. I'll say attempting to solve it that way did not work well for me. So what I ended up doing was integrating human experiences into the mix. So, and um, I didn't just pull this area out of, uh, out of, or this idea out of thin air. I'll uh, go back and reference the paper in a moment. Um, but basically what we're doing here is we will be integrating a game controller interface to work with the environment. We'll be using that to pilot the robot to take an action, say opening the microwave. Uh, many times in, in my work here, I would go and open the microwave with the robot, you know, 100, 200 times um, and build up a, a replay buffer of at least 30,000 steps for the actor to train on. We're then taking that buffer and feeding it into the standard actor critic process. Um, now, 
one of the things in the paper that's in this uh, on this page that they mention replay policy learning, solving long horizon tasks via imitation learning. If you read into this uh, paper, they're talking about using a pre-training phase uh, to basically do behavioral cloning, and then after behavioral cloning, you know, going in and doing live training on the environment. I tried a different, a few different pre-training options. And uh, what ended up working better for me was weighted training. So for me, pre-training very quickly, I think it was overfitting uh, and, and causing the robot to learn some, some suboptimal behaviors. Um, perhaps because, you know, my input data wasn't all that robust. You know, working with a controller, um, I got pretty good with it, but I could not with a, uh, with a, a two, you know, with my thumbs, successfully use all nine degrees of freedom on the robot all the time. So I think my training data was probably a little bit choppier, maybe, than theirs. Um, but So what I found worked for me was doing a weighted replay buffer. So we're going to be writing code that basically says, hey, for the first so many iterations, for the first two or three hundred, I want you to pull most of your experiences from you know, this human generated data. And then for the next one, uh, pull, you know, half, and then the next one, pull a quarter. Um, and then eventually it's just in the live training loop and it's learned what it needed to from the human data. So that is a way to tackle, you know, a task, opening a microwave or opening a, uh, you know, opening a drawer, turning the stove on. Um, but how do we do multiple tasks? So obviously it's it's possible to train um, an agent that, that can do complex things, um, that there are some challenges there. Um, what I'm doing here is hierarchical or a, a form of hierarchical reinforcement learning. So usually when people say hierarchical reinforcement learning, the assumption is that there is a master model and then a bunch of submodels. Uh, I'm doing something a little bit simpler. So in this scenario, we're going to have a meta agent. That agent is going to coordinate the different policies. So you might train, use this process to train a policy that can open a microwave. That now becomes policy one. The master agent, the meta agent, which will have a static um, policy, or it will have a static a list of tasks it's trying to accomplish. And when microwave comes up, it's going to go grab policy one and load it into memory and use it on the environment to accomplish the microwave task and then move on to policy two. Um, I'm actually okay with that being a static list because you know if you think about how you might use something like this in the real world, um, obviously a, a robot you know, autonomously rolling around your house doing things would be kind of cool. But um, it would be also very useful to be able to say, give it a voice command and have that voice command pipe into, um, you know, hey, I told it, open the, open the fridge, grab me something. And it, you know, selects that task and goes and executes it. So um, what are you going to need to do this project? So it, it is going to require uh, probably a machine with the GPU. You're, you're uh, going to be training several policies. It will be very, very slow if you don't have um, a GPU. I'm using a 3090. I've done this kind of work with things down to about a 3060, and, uh, and it, it should work just fine. Uh, so any decent gaming machine should be all right. Um, I have not attempted to run this code on Windows. I am using a uh, derivation of Ubuntu. And uh, you are going to need a game controller. So I am using a Logitech GamePad F310. Uh, it's a, uh, a PlayStation style game controller that, that plugs in via USB. And that allows me to you know, go ahead and interact with the robot and collect some of those human, exper uh, human experiences. So final part of this intro, let's go ahead and show you the end results of what we're going to be building. And I'm going to run the meta policy first. So test meta. And just kind of show you what to expect. 
So there's my robot opening the microwave. It slid open a drawer. It opened the top drawer and it turned a burner on. And then uh, I've also got something here to give me a success percentage. You know, how often is it successful? So that's going to run for a moment. And we can see that I got it to a 95% success ratio on um, a four, you know, a set of four tasks here. So that's what we're going to be building. Um, as you can see here, I already mentioned this was a large project. Uh, there are, there's a lot of code here. This is going to be quite a bit of work. I would not be surprised if this series hits 15 or 20 videos. Um, but if you are interested and stick with me, we're going to build something really, really cool here. So with that, I'm going to close out this first one and I will see you on the next video.